Hello everyone and welcome to day two fossil of the day. Uh, my name is Isaac Astle. I will be your host for today. Uh, fossil of the day is put on every single year by Can International. This year it's hosted by the Australian Youth Climate Coalition as well as supported by youth delegations literally the world over. And without further ado ladies and gentlemen, I've got some great news. In fact, I've got the best news that any of us here could possibly want to hear. We don't need to worry about climate change. It's okay everyone, it's not a problem anymore. We're on track to make sure that we, uh, global warming does not go over two degrees. Completely on track. I've got it from the highest authority. And ladies and gentlemen, for putting us all at ease, for making sure that tonight we can pack our bags and go home, second place fossil of the award of day goes to the other one. Other one, other one, other one. That's a ooh, technical difficulty. That was the uh, tricky flag. <laughs> goes to the U.S. of A. Round of applause. Just one moment. Take your place on second, please, sir. The United States of America earns the second place fossil. It is one thing for certain governments in Durban to be complacent about the urgency of global climate disruption. It is another issue to be complacent when their respective countries are the main culprits, such as the United States, who is the worst historical climate polluter. But yesterday, the, climate, the United States position degraded well beyond complacent by rationalizing the collective mitigation targets are in keeping with what climate scientists say is needed to avoid global climate disaster. Hmm, charming. Referring to the fact that he himself was an IPCC contributor, Jonathan Pershing, the US Deputy Special Envoy, said yesterday that there are an infinite number of pathways to staying below two degrees. And yet, the US has managed to avoid all of them. <laughs> Pershing nonetheless argued that current targets are sufficient enough through to 2020. There is scientific consensus about anthropogenic climate disruption, the urgency to have an emissions peak to avoid runaway global warming, as well as the gross inadequacy of polluting targets. The United States is either in denial about the science or is trying to thwart justified pressure to improve its own ambition. Just one moment, we'll have the acceptance speech from the US first, please. Would you like to have your acceptance speech? Sure. I am very proud to announce that Jonathan Pershing, the lead negotiator for the United States of America, has pointed out to the world that there are an infinite number of pathways to staying below two degrees that follow the actions currently being taken by countries around the world. We are sure that these pathways will sustain us through the year 2020. So obviously, we can allow the global temperature to rise quite a bit before immediate action is necessary. I am thrilled that the United States, the hard work the United States has put in, has already come to the simple and effective solution to solving the climate crisis. On behalf of the United States, I'd like to thank the major corporate lobbies for pointing out the fact that no more negotiations are required here at COP17 in Durban, South Africa. A solution is within the realm of possibility, which dovetails nicely with our new financial plan of sending President Obama to a casino in Las Vegas uh, to win enough money to pay off our national debt. As a representative of the United States of America here at COP17, I gladly accept this award and I'd like to urge the world to be less ambitious and more optimistic. I've got terrible news. I'm afraid the United States is wrong. We need urgent action. Nay, we need an international mandate for climate action. I've got it from 
maybe not a higher authority, but definitely a high authority, that we need to act now together as one people. And for bringing this to our attention so urgently, after all that they've done, all their efforts, the first place fossil of the day goes to. Round of applause, please, everyone, on your thighs. Canada. North American double. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Congratulations. It's nice to have you back, sir. No problem. Canada is awarded the first place fossil of the day for proposing eventual solutions for urgent problems. Canadian Environment Minister Peter Kent said yesterday to media that there is an urgency to this. We don't need a binding convention. What we need is action and a mandate to work on an eventual binding convention. <laughs> what we can say, he nailed the first half of the sentence. The second half needs some work. In order to address an urgent problem, we need a mandate to work on an eventual solution. Like Canada's plan to address its greenhouse gas emissions, this just doesn't add up. Canada has made many empty promises over the recent years and continues to have no plan that comes close to achieving our weak targets. Canada has agreed to keeping global warming below two degrees in Copenhagen. They've said they understand the need to close the gigaton gap as soon as possible. And they claim to take the climate crisis very seriously. Uh, but action is for everyone else. To quote a panelist at today's Cannes International Press Conference, Canada is quickly becoming a bad joke at these negotiations. So please, Canada, we need you to urgently work on an urgent solution to an urgent problem. Would you like? Oh, thank you. Yes, uh, it's no surprise. Though, thank you for this award. It's such a su such a surprise to be accepting it here in Durban. Um, yes, I just want to want to thank you here. Um, uh, I, I think it's no surprise that Canada is uh, being acting contradictorily uh, in this process. Uh, I mean, after all, you know, we're a democracy, uh, go given a mandate to govern for the people. But here in Durban, we're here to to govern for or represent the interests of polluters and put them before the interests of people, not just in Canada, but around the world. So thank you. Thank you very much. So um, with that being said, uh, thank you. I just wanted to make note of some stickers here, just uh, really uh, conveying fully the, the true, uh, true intentions of, of Canada here in Durban uh, as part of an uh, uh, a campaign called Operation Oil Change by uh, a group called the Canadian Youth, uh, Youth Delegation. Um, so there's some, some stickers floating around in the crowd, so pick one up, put it on your laptop, water bottle, on a friend's forehead, you know, whatever works. So uh, we also have buttons too, if you don't want to permanently put a, a sticker on something. So, but uh, thank you very much for recognizing the, uh, the in integral role that Canada is playing in, in these climate change negotiations. and. Uh, I uh, hope to see you again in the future. Well, you've already won two first places, Canada. Would you, for such a monumental effort and for getting out right in front of the game so early on in the negotiations, can you please take a bow? Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> and so ends another day of Fossil of the Day. Can we please have the sing outs, ladies and gentlemen? Fossil of the day, fossil of the day. Who was bad? Who was worse? Fossil of the day, fossil of the day. All the blame, all the shame. Fossil of the day.